here at Lara Farms and Julian was just telling us a little bit about grafting black sapote. Uh, this is a Berniker black sapote. Sure. Uh, it's a variety I have not yet tried, so we'll, we'll be trying this once it ripens. Okay. But I'm hoping that you can tell us about grafting black sapote. Sure. Um, well, uh, black sapote has its you know little tricks here and there. I like to we like to come up a little bit closer. We got uh, this scion that has a lot of leaves on it without these guys. This looks like uh, the thing that sticks out of Frankenstein's neck, pretty much. And you don't want to, you know, graft some scion with this thing on it. You want it to look like this, where it has normal um, eye buds and maybe a nice little terminal bud there. So we'll just cut this guy right here and remove these leaves here on the side and we can leave a couple of them like this and cut them in half because you don't want it to work overtime you want it you know to take it easy and uh, not really have that much area to cover to um, to take the water when you're grafting it so we're gonna take this this guy right here and graft it on a young black sapote rootstock that I have in the greenhouse. Julian's got their black sapote rootstock and the graft wood and other stuff that you need to graft. And so yeah, basically show us how to graft black sapote. Basically, you got your uh, grafting knife, preferably uh, a Tina or an Italian made knife because uh, they let they tend to last longer you get these cheap knives and you sharpen them over and over and over and over again and they just they uh, they get burnt out kind of like this this guy it's kind of burnt out but it lasted a long time but it's got like this. good quality metal is probably the difference right? double-sided because some of them are just one-sided if you use a double-sided blade even better now when I cut I'm gonna do a cleft graft and when I when I do a cleft graft I tend to let some leaves in the bottom Okay, so now I'm gonna decapitate here. I'm gonna try to get a flat surface, kind of like that. Remove a couple of these leaves, like this. Okay, I'm gonna let these guys in the bottom stay. And then I'm gonna get my scion that I left a couple of leaves on because I am gonna bag this. And that's the only reason why I left the leaves on it. If it was with uh, parafilm, I would have taken everything off. So here I'm gonna do the first cut. I'm gonna go in a little bit. So this scion is about a quarter the size of the rootstock, as far as the diameter. Yeah. And uh, maybe a little bit more than that, but uh, that's. That's how it works, right? Yeah. You know, it's it's some things are more pickier than others. Black sapote is not that picky. See how it oxidizes? It was completely white a few seconds ago and it was turning yellow. So we're going in to the side here. We're not going down the middle. So we've got to pretty much match it up to the cambium. So you're matching it on one side, and you, you went into the side so it's a, a narrower part of the root stop. All right, so I'm holding it with my thumb and finger so that uh, it doesn't flop over while I grab the, the rubber band. And I like using rubber bands because they untie themselves. I don't have to go back and untie this like I would with a plastic tape. Yeah. It just the sunlight gets to it, and or just age in some cases, and it, it just uh, starts to to break and fall right, off. Right, it disintegrates by itself. And I pull it, to make it nice and tight, so the graft union can uh, can take. And I do a little little tie like that under. So we got a couple of leaves in the bottom, so that the root system on this rootstock can continue to function normally as a plant mm -hmm. until this uh, starts to fuse together and starts using 
the new leaves and leaves that it has already on it for for, for um, making food. So you you keep this obviously in a protected location, and so that uh, the wind doesn't get the, um, to it, and you know. But uh, how long does it normally take before it's ready for the cold, cruel world of not being bagged or? Um, I would think about a month until the graft starts to take, and then another month to get it acclimated, mm -hmm. you know, until you can put it outside. Mm -hmm. So I would keep it in the shade for at least two or three months, and then um, introduce it to the, to the world little by little uh -huh. after that. I mean, if, if you know, if uh, it's grown and, and leaves are hardened, um, and you put it outside, the leaves are going to burn a little bit. It's normal. But once the, the new leaves start to shoot out, that's going to be able to handle it. It's not going to, it's not going to get burned at all. So I put a little wire here because I'm going to put a plastic bag over it so that the moisture that's collected from being inside of a bag can feed these guys some water. They can drink water and um, keep this hydrated until this um, becomes part of this. So until this becomes part of this, it's going to have to take water, receive water from the leaves until it can receive it from the roots. So, uh, you know, the soil is, is damp but not, not wet. Is that enough moisture for two months? Yeah, because the, this bag is going to create a lot of condensation mm -hmm. and a lot of moisture and it's going to trickle down to the soil mm -hmm. little by little and also it's going to be drinking water through the leaves until it, it, it fuses together with this and there's enough moisture in here i mean if you pick this up it's pretty heavy mm -hmm. it looks kind of dry on the top but it could be heavy in the bottom and you can't see it only way we can really tell the moisture levels by picking it up this is pretty heavy what do you think yeah, um, and I'm also noticing it's very well rooted. That's uh, that was a nice, uh, uh, nice seedling. All the roots are, are yeah, are uh, down to the bottom, and they seem pretty dense. So it's, yeah, uh, that's important too. You got to have a healthy rootstock for the, for this to work. So we're gonna bag this this girl, and then also we're going to after we bag it, we're gonna seal it we're going to tie it around here nice and tight so that all this starts to um get uh, really humid and, and and you see a lot of condensation inside the bag yeah you don't want to have all the condensation running down and then go going out of the whole ecosystem that you right, just created right and so you have to make sure that the the water that does run down stays with the plant right we're going to tie it right like around here and believe it or not the water um, uh, starts to develop up here and it falls directly down and also a lot of dew um, starts to form on the leaf too so it's pretty wet in here mm -hmm. and even the soil gets wet from all this moisture that, that gets formed inside and uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell and just seal it here and we're done and then of course put in a nice cool shaded area and uh, in a month you should see um, some signs of life. If it's still green in the month, that means that you know you're doing pretty good. But one thing I've noticed: black sequoias tend to take a little bit longer to start making new shoots. Mm -hmm. So it might take more than a month. It might take six weeks. It might take eight weeks for you to start seeing some new shoots. But if everything is still green and the leaves are still on, that means you're doing fine. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much, Julian. Yeah, Appreciate you're welcome. Just sharing that. Yeah, it's been fun. Black sapote, you know, it's it's uh, it's not as hard as, as grafting other things like mango or, or even mame. But um, you should have a good success rate with this. Great. Thanks. Okay.